Today's discussion will be presented in three sections since we are recording it for broadcast on Federal News Radio 1500 AM. You're welcome to post questions and comments during the session, and we'll try to answer them online. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Jason Fornicola, Director of Custom Media at WTOP and FederalNewsRadio.com. My guest today is Peter Tran, General Manager and Senior Director of RSA's Worldwide Advanced Cyber Defense Practice. Peter, welcome back to the program. Great to have you with us Great again. Great to be here back in D.C. Peter, when a breach occurs, there are naturally a lot of questions, questions that may be easy to ask yet hard to answer. And when we look at the federal space, in particular, agency leadership obviously wants to know what happened as quickly as possible. But those answers sometimes can be hard to come by. What are your thoughts on that? Wow, I've got a lot of thoughts, but we have limited time. But, you know, I'm going to start out with an adage I think you can probably relate to and hopefully the listeners can relate to. In real estate, there is location, location, location. In data breaches, when you want to really find out what happened, it's always visibility, visibility, and more visibility. Did I say visibility, Jason? Because I did. I think you did. And the reason that we have this hard to answer questions that happen during a data breach is we don't have enough visibility, particularly in large networks, complex networks like the federal government. There is a, it's a worldwide organization. And if you don't drive enough visibility in those areas by which are the highest value, you end up what we call operational thrashing or security tug of war, where you, t- you start checking the baby's temperature every five minutes because you just don't have the answers. And that causes more inefficiencies and the breaches start to extend longer and longer and longer. So you you mentioned correctly, the federal government massive worldwide organization has touch points all around the world. How realistic is it for us to get to a place of clear visibility when we're talking about cyber attacks? There is certainly light at the end of the tunnel. I want to make that very clear. It's not a fool's errand for sure. And when you want to structure your monitoring and early detection environment, there's a couple of key areas you want to look at. First, if you're driving visibility, you want to look at your analytics. And in doing so, you're going to want to capture as much of the traffic. What I mean by traffic is the behavior of the networks, what's good, what's bad, what looks potentially benign. And you capture that at both the network, the endpoints, and what we call the analytics environment. So we gather as much context as possible. And my experience at RSA, and when we're using, for example, NetWitness for both capturing network packets, and just for clarification, Jason, when I say packets, it's not like packets of food or you know packets of coffee. It's all the little bits of data. Every time I hit send to you, a, a packet of data comes across the network, and it says something about what I just sent to you and you sent back to me. Gives me an indicator of whether I sent you something good or bad, right? Just just to um, make that point clear. And there's billions, trillions beyond that of packets traversing the World Wide Web all the time, particularly in the federal government. So when we do that, when we capture that the data, we can actually see behaviors, we can analyze them, and then we can actually take what we call action, the on take actionable intelligence from the context and do something about it proactively. And that's what's called early detection before a hacker starts to, and I use the term, weaponize themselves and start to take hold of the network and what we're seeing in the media now around very, very large breaches. And I think it's timely. You and I are sitting down now and Yahoo just discloses there is all of their accounts have been compromised. I mean, I can't imagine all over $3 billion across the entire federated business. And that was several years for that to come out, which you rightly said was just recently that we learned that all of the Yahoo accounts were impacted. But we're finding this out now, and this first broke years ago. Oh, I was, um, I was thinking about this all day yesterday and, and even this morning before coming here with you, is 2013 was the initial discovery. And so I have a couple numbers I actually had to write down <laughs> for you because it's, it's important to know that 80%, 82% exactly, of breaches happen in minutes. 99% of the data already left in that time. So that leaves 64% of breaches are discovered within months or years in the case of Yahoo. 
2013, and now we're hearing about 2017, 3 billion. That normally occurs because we don't have enough visibility to drive early detection. Shifting gears slightly, when you talk to people in this space, people like you, we often hear about potentially a communication gap because of all the stakeholders involved, as big as the enterprise is, of the federal government. Sometimes people speak different languages and different stakeholders have different understandings of issues and it gets very complex. Uh, how can that communication be improved so that all of the stakeholders get on the same page, at least with the vocabulary and the words that we're using? So what happens in reality in security organizations is called something that I'm going to turn the paint by number security. It, they try to, we try to get a formula that makes it comfortable and we follow it paint by the numbers. But in reality, that assumes that breaches are going to occur the same way and we're going to follow the numbers exactly the same way. That's part of the challenge of communication. And when we want to try to standardize that, what happens is you want to have the data that you receive from your technology or from your perimeter to have assistance for you to make a data-driven decision as opposed to, I'm going to, what, which direction is the wind going? And I'm going to make a hypothesis that says X, Y, Z are attacking me now. Go find the data that make that makes sense of that. Absolutely wrong. So that's where the communication, the translation starts to fall apart is that they're not looking at the data. They're chasing areas where they need to find out where the gaps or the blind spots are. How do these two things that we've discussed so far, the uh, lack of information at a time when the breach happens and also maybe some communication issues. How does that impact the overall cyber posture of an organization? It's probably one of the most significant areas that impacts the cyber posture, and it's called dwell time mm -hmm. or breach exposure time, however you want to think about it. The longer it takes for you to discover and to communicate a potential breach or a breach in already occurring, the longer it is you'll be at risk and you're going to dwell over it. That's what we call dwell time. It's the number one reason why we have the yahoos of the world or others. I mean, there, there are larger ones that we don't necessarily hear about. That's why you get 2013 to 2017. What's happening? That's a long dwell time, right? We're going to talk about some of the solutions to those challenges in the segments ahead. But first, we are going to pause here for a short break. My guest is Peter Tran, General Manager and Senior Director of RSA's Worldwide Advanced Cyber Defense Practice on Data Breach Monitoring and Early Detection in Government, sponsored by RSA and Kerasoft. I'm your host, Jason Fornicola, and you're listening to federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM.